of things that kind of have a similar, I guess, superficial appearance. Um, there's like a little bit of papillomatosis, some acanthosis, and some dilated blood-filled spaces up top. Um, and then kind of superficially, there are some smaller vessels diving down a little bit deeper. Um, so, I mean, I consider angiokeratoma for the top part, but it goes way deeper than what yeah. I expect for that. So, um, a vergus hemangioma. Good. This. Yeah, that's very good. We don't see these that often. Um, and the top of verrucous hemangioma, of course, is going to have a verrucous look on the top. The problem is, is I see lots of vascular things that look a little papillomatous like this. Number one, this is not, this particular example is not incredibly verrucous. I mean, a little bit, but it's not, you would never look at this and think, oh, it's a wart. You're going to look at the vessels and, and think this is a vascular lesion, right? And also, I've seen a variety of other things that have been picked at and traumatized and get some corrigo change over them and are not verrucous hemangioma, but look a little verrucous on the top. The, the, from reading, the important distinction people have made with, with true verrucous hemangioma is that usually, they're, again, they're probably, I don't know if they're really a neoplasm or malformation, but the big thing is they go deep. They often go deep, and I, I, I tend to think that the current thought is that they may be malformations, but they often have a much deeper component, and look, we can see that here. We're all the way down in the fat, and we still got lots of vessels. So the problem is if you just do a shave, you're going to be leaving a lot of the lesion behind. It is benign, but the point is it can recur, it could bleed, it could ulcerate, you know. So it, it can be more, uh, a little bit more difficult to manage or remove because of how deep uh, it extends into the underlying tissue. Um, and so that's typical of a true verrucous hemangioma, which again, to me, this looks like a malformation. We got vessels of varying size, some of with that, which have veins with thick walls. Um, but that's, uh, that's the, the key to like the real verrucous hemangioma is they're supposed to be deep like this and have a verrucous surface and we have variable different types of vessels and they, they do kind of air quotes infiltrate, they interconnect with all the different tissue, but each of the vascular, vascular spaces is well formed. So that's kind of the difference, you know, we, we talk about angiosarcoma as being infiltrative, but there are many other things that are not well circumscribed and have vascular channels that intermingle with normal tissue. The difference is that in angiosarcoma, you know, A, you have atypia, and B, you have channels that are wrapping around normal structures. Here, we have normal, well-formed, round to oval channels that are just spaced in between normal tissue, not like wrapping around and diving between them. There's, there's kind of a difference in the pattern. I, I feel like that sometimes confuses people because they say, well, how is this not infiltrative? But it's just that there, it's intermingled, it's intermixed, but it's not actually aggressively diving betw between each individual piece. I recognize that that can be hard, and I don't know that I'm explaining it as well as I could, but in any, in any case, uh, um, uh, sometimes that comes up. Some of the, the channels here, look, these look a little more, look at the nice hobnails. See, I told you, hobnails are everywhere. You got channels that are much more, you know, smaller and have more plump hobnailed cells here that look different from those bigger ones down deep. And then up top, they look, I mean, take that little bit of blood out. We could call that lymphangioma. We could say it's the top of the targetoid hemosiderotic hemangioma. You really can have a lot of overlap in, in the surface of these sometimes. So it's also okay to say benign vascular proliferation and say I can't subclassify it on this shave biopsy. Or to say hemangioma, if I've excluded other things like if this is not a radiated site, I can say this is benign. And if I want to know if it's lymphatic or not, I can do a D240. Um, but um, even still, I can say it's benign and vascular or it's benign and, and lymphatic, and I can't exactly subclassify it. The subclassifying, once we've ruled out malignancy, the subclassification is, is, is often less important. There are exceptions, but it's not as important clinically.